The Eastern Cape government was dealt a double blow last week as two separate government entities issued reports with adverse findings on the province. Auditor General Tsakani Maduleke found that the 10 million rand contract involving the procurement of 100 scooters to transport patients from rural areas to healthcare facilities was issued irregularly. On the same day, Auditor General Tsakani Maduleke's audit outcomes revealed that the province incurred the highest unauthorized spending of 1.59 billion rand in the country uh, well, during the 2019-2020 financial year. Now, releasing her audit report, Maduleke also said uh, the Eastern Cape Health Department has the highest con contingent liabilities at 36 billion rand above all and national government entities audited in the country. Now, Finance MEC in the Eastern Cape, Mlungisi Mvoko, joins us now. A very good morning to you, MEC. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Uh, thank you very much and a very good morning to you. Now, the SIU MEC, uh, the SIU affidavit to the special tribunal seeking to interdict the scooters deal said the tender process was marked by irregularity, dishonesty and possible collusion. Any update on what has happened? Uh, let me start by saying simply, uh, as the first, um, as as, a, as provincial treasury, we were the first to stop the procurement of the of the scooters, uh, and I'm very happy that in that report they they do acknowledge that uh, our, our documents because when we saw um, when we were consulted by the Department of Health on the procurement of scooters, the firstly we agreed that it was not in the 1920 procurement plan, secondly that it was uh, the specifications were a bit suspect, and we did not believe that the market was tested. And the, the, the project plan linked to the purchase was not there. So uh, after uh, ha having um, analyzed it, we wrote then to the Department of Health to say, uh, you cannot continue with this procurement. So what you, the, the public protector came at a stage when we had already acknowledged it. So that's why there has been no uh, funds or no, no, no purchases done uh, by the Department of Health because we, we, we did not uh, approve that and, and, and cautioned them against going ahead. Uh, we escalated the matter, as you would know, in all the investigations that we were done during the, the period of um, the procurement, uh, we have uh, partnered with the uh, law enforcement agencies to take them forward. So that matter has also been given to the, the law enforcement agencies to take forward, and a report of, of such will go to, to the Premier of the province uh, uh, for implementation. Well, investigations date back to July last year, and the SCOPA in the province has actually applied its mind on the matter as well as your department, the National Treasury. So well, what has since happened? Yes, we also applied our mind on it as provincial treasury and wrote to, 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 the, to the Department of Health to, to actually indicate the areas where we could not agree with and to, um, to implore them to start uh, some processes of... Um, like disciplinary processes, or if I, if I could say, not disciplinary processes, consequence management. So we wrote to them about that, and you must remember that uh, that then would be between the Department of Health and the Premier's office, as it is a coordinating uh, department. Uh, we as Treasury would not then um, uh, pursue uh, consequence management uh, in that department, but it will be the office of the Premier that would, that would pursue uh, that with the Department of Health. Our job was to look at whether the procurement was correct. And when we found that it was not incorrect, we wrote to them to stop the procurement. And we submitted then the report to the office of the premier. Uh, the, the, the report of the public protector does the same, uh, fortunately, and we have copied and it was sent to the audit of the premier, so the office of the premier. So it will be the office of the premier that will then uh, follow up uh, with the uh, consequence management uh, within that department, because it will involve quite a number of, 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 of people, uh, as well as it will involve a uh, and the head of department or, or one say an accounting officer so the, the office of the premier would follow up with it. interestingly because your department and the premier's office are pulling in different directions because remember the premier had first uh, you know defended the acquisitions of these scooters saying that uh, the, gov the, the the national cabinet met a couple of years ago and discussed the uh, you know the acquisition of the scooters as an uh, innovative intervention to provide health care in the eastern cape I'm, I'm not certain where you say we're pulling in different directions because we have a duty as provincial treasurer that when there is a, a, a tender to go out, they would want to go out and tender, we have to follow up and, and see that uh, all is done accordingly. 
So I don't know where we and the Premier are speaking in left tongues because what we noted is that it was not in their procurement plan of 1920 because before you can embark on any procurement plan, I mean any procurement, we have to develop a plan. And in their 1920 procurement plan, it was not there. And I don't think uh, from the point of Treasury, we are saying it was not, it's not necessary or there was no need for the scooters. But we're simply looking at the, the manner in which they, they wanted to acquire the scooters. So that's why we looked at the procurement plan. Is it there? No, it's not there. How are the specifications? We found the specifications to be not, not really, not they have not tested the market uh, in terms of price comparison. The specifications to us were to a, to a certain extent looked like more tailor-made. Uh, there, there was no project plan linked to the purchase. So we looked at those things uh, before we, we can agree for, for you to go ahead with the procurement. And once we, though you do not, you do not uh, tick all the boxes, we'll drive back to you and say, you and these are the issues that we have with you as a department. So you may, you may do, this is our advice that you may not uh, um, uh, go ahead with the procurement. The necessity of it, I think the Premier's office is correct that there is a need for it. But mm. that need does not mean that you have to cut corners in acquiring such a But the Premier said decision. he had commissioned a comprehensive report on this project. As a matter of fact, let, let me just uh, uh, share with you a direct quotation from the Premier. He said that it's a service that we need in the Eastern Cape. We have to reconcile it with all the other issues and so on to make a point that we remove all doubt and all the negativity around it. Yes, I, that's why I'm saying I, it is a service that we need. But as a service that we need, it does not mean you must cut corners in acquiring that service. That's all that we're saying as provincial treasury. It's a service that you need, but you, you, must, you must meet uh, all the requirements in order to you to do that procurement. And we support that. It was tabled uh, in Expo. We also support that. But you, you don't have to acquire it uh, by, by other means. You must follow pro the processes. Yes. The, the supply chain management processes must be followed to the letter. That's what we are saying as, as, as provincial treasury. Now, the acting public protector said the awarding of the contract was improper and uh, in violation and in contravention of applicable legal prescripts. So who should be held accountable? Uh, the, 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 head, the head of department or uh, should I say that the accounting officer should be held accountable because he must give an account as to how did they arrive at, uh, at, uh, at awarding that contract even though it was suspect. And you must remember there are other uh, layers below, below him or her. So uh, those are the people that must be held accountable for that, uh, for, for consequence management. Okay. This is the biggest challenge that we are having, uh, is that uh, some of these issues... Um, there are challenges in the departments. There is a, we, have, we acknowledge that there is lack of consequence management. So once we start with that and ensure that the accounting officers are held accountable, the, the other levels will, will fall in place. Now, the Auditor General's report says the Eastern Cape had contingent liabilities at uh, 36 billion rand above all local and national government entities audited in the country. Why did that happen under your watch, MEC? Uh, firstly, if you look at those, uh, the, the continent liabilities as estimated at 36.75 uh, billion, it, 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 it refers to, to uh, the Department uh, of Health, and it has to do with the medical legal claims that we, that we have. So uh, that this is where the, the, this, uh, um, uh, 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 this 36.7 uh, billion rand is there is a collaboration between the Department of Health, Provincial Treasury, and the Office of the Premier, and we have formed a team that would go into the Department of Health. It, actually, they have started working with the Department of Health to try and mitigate the risk of medical legal claims, because uh, the Department of Health, as part of uh, one of the challenges that they have, is that they, there's a lot of uh, money that they pay to these medical legal uh, claims. And, and, and that eats into their budget of the following year, or in fact, eats into the budget of the current uh, financial year. So we have set up a team, and that team is looking at all of those uh, issues. And we are hoping that uh, um, by the end of this financial year, there will be a clear strategy to deal with the medical legal claims. And it would, because even that 36.75 uh, billion 
to a larger extent, it's an, it's an estimate. So what we are looking at is to ensure that we, we get the exact figure of, 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 of the medical legal claims yes. that, that take us to the figure of 36.75 billion. So okay. there is a team already working on it uh, from, the, from the OTP, the Department of Health and the, and the Provincial Treasurer. Okay. And according to the Auditor General, three of your major departments, that is the education, the health and transport departments, have got poor controls, MEC. I mean, considering that it's nothing new. I mean, it's absolutely nothing new with this. With all the bad publicity that the Eastern Cape has been getting, especially the Department of Health, what are you doing to either enforce accountability or to punish those that are reckless with public funds? Yes, it's true that it is nothing new. Uh, if, you, if the things that we need to do, in fact, as provincial treasurer, we have observed quite a number of things that we think would be important. One is that we need to instill a, a culture of discipline when it comes to uh, the supply chain management prescripts. Uh, we need to build the capacity of the of the chief financial officers, and we need to strengthen a, a governance structures, which is the, the internal uh, audit and risk management. Uh, and we have a program already that we are running to build a financial management capacity of the departments, and uh, we we are empowering the staff in the in the supply chain management uh, uh, division through training. So we do acknowledge because the first thing that you must do is to acknowledge if you want to correct anything. We do acknowledge that there is a serious challenge on the three biggest departments uh, in, in, in the province. And what we are going, what we are doing now is to ensure that we empower the staff, we empower and capacitate the office of the, of the chief financial officers, officers in, in all three departments. And we submit continuous reports to, uh, to, to the Expo and the Office of the Premier in terms of progress in, uh, in, in, those, in those three departments. So yes, we agree to that. And we have embarked on a, on a, on a, on a program already of, uh, of training and capacity building, especially in the finance uh, part of those three departments. Yeah. And the provincial government has allocated uh, a 30 million rand intervention that will be set aside to fund university students struggling with the registration and, of course, those who cannot get results due to debt. So where is the money coming from? The money, the money comes from the office of the of the premier in its in its own budget the, okay. the office of the premier has set aside an amount of, of, of 30 million rand in his own budget to actually assist those uh, uh, the, the students in the universities it's not the first time that the office of the premier has done that in its own its in own budget i think in the uh, in, in the previous year and the other year they had set aside some funds to assist i think it was in the university of forte but now they have looked uh, broader than the University of Forte. So in its own uh, budget, that uh, it then reinvests an amount uh, that they used uh, to assist those students uh, from the office of the Premier. Now, uh, just a quick one, uh, MEC. Big sums of money are uh, allocated, but South Africans have learned to be anxious when it comes to handling of monies by those given responsibility. So what guarantee that this fund will be utilised to educate students? Uh, there's only one guarantee that the fund can be used to educate students is when, 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 when that fund is transferred directly to the universities. Th that is the only guarantee. And I think okay. in the previous, the previous transfer where the office of the premier uh, uh, did such, uh, it transferred it to, to, the, to, to, the, to, the, to the university. And the same, I would, I would imagine that the same would happen here that it would not be given to students, but would be given to institutions uh, to assist those students. That's the only guarantee. If then, the, and a report, in fact, must flow from the, that institution, the university, back to the office of the premier to say, this is, these are the number of students and they are the names of students that have been assisted. And that is a monitoring tool that the office of the premier would use to ensure, I mean, to be certain that the money actually went to where it was supposed to have gone to. All right, MEC, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for the update. Thank you very much. Mr.